You're looking at a very large EF4 tornado that occurred east of Oklahoma City, May 19, 2013. See the clear air on both sides, huge funnel in there, strong rotation from near the ground right on up to the top of the thunderstorm. Now this one occurred in southwest Oklahoma City and Moore, Oklahoma on May 20th, 2013. Kind of looks like the other one, doesn't it? You kind of see the sky or the light on both sides, but huge funnel. And keep in mind, the tornado isn't just that funnel. It's this whole area around all the air is flowing in and it's going up once again to the top of the thunderstorm in most cases. Now look at this one. This is the El Reno tornado of May 31st, 2013. This one was west of Oklahoma City. Now this was a monster storm. As you look at this, there are multiple tornadoes inside that funnel. Some of them were about the same size as two football fields end to end, and, and there were smaller ones that were moving with a forward speed up to 175 miles per hour. Now, the maximum wind in this monster tornado was around or very close to 300 miles per hour, but once again, it looks kind of like the other ones. It's just a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. All three of them very similar. Let's look at the surface map here. This goes with the first tornado you look, just east of Oklahoma City, the Shawnee EF4, Carney EF3. And we look at Oklahoma there in the middle, and we see the little line coming in that low pressure area. See that low pressure area just, just northwest of Oklahoma City? You can see the dry line coming south out of the low pressure area on down into Texas, and it gets extremely hot along that dry line, and sometimes that'll cause thunderstorms to go up. And you see in Texas and into Oklahoma, dew points, you see those uh, green numbers, 70 and 68, and then it's 66 in Oklahoma. There's 70 dew points of moisture available rushing into Oklahoma. Temperatures uh, 90s right along the dry line, 100 plus. So that's the first storm we looked at. Let's look at the next one. Well, the surface map looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? Still has a dry line, that dry line, little bubbles. Uh, with a clear area inside, goes from central Oklahoma, about Oklahoma City, back southwest to about Wichita Falls. Along it, got really, really hot, really, really unstable. And we look through Texas, we see dew points, the green numbers, 71 and the 75 down south, and 71 at Corpus Christi. And look there in Oklahoma, we see a 72. Warm, moist, unstable air flowing northward. Here's the surface map. From 1 p.m. May 31st, 2013, the El Reno EF5 west of Oklahoma City. Monster tornado formed, monster supercell, and it's not really drawn on there, but there is a dry line. You see that number in western Oklahoma, 042. There's a dry line right through that, and the dry line gets a little more well formed during the day, moves up into central Oklahoma. So it's the same basic map, little stationary front, cool front northwest, dry line in the area, warm, not hot, stable air coming up from the south, and that stratus streaming by, if you could just see it on that map, would represent energy, convectively available potential energy. So, there it is. Convectively available potential energy cape. You have to have that. Now, sometimes in the summertime, you might get a number of 5,000, which stands for 5,000 joules per kilogram, which is an energy statement, energy notation. And sometimes in the summer, you get that 5,000 and it's just hot and humid. You can't get any cooling. It's thick and sticky. But if you have those conditions along with the dry line and all that moisture coming up and a jet stream coming, all the ingredients you need to create severe thunderstorms and tornadoes, you will have them. But the interesting, around 5,000, 4 to 5,000 here in the central strip of the state. And here's the one convectively available potential energy for the Moore tornado, May 20th, 2013. Looks about the same, doesn't it? No cape, no energy available in western Oklahoma, but in central sections onto the east, lots of moisture, lots of energy. These storms require lots of energy. Here's the third one that was to the west of Oklahoma City, Canadian County. Hey, what are we doing? Showing the same picture? It looks just like it, doesn't it? That's 5,000 joules per kilogram of energy. Central Oklahoma. Uh, they all kind of look alike. Now we're going to imagine that you're facing the screen and in your right hand you have a thermometer and it is red. And in your left hand you have a, a piece of equipment that's green and it will show you the dew point. Dew point can measure the moisture in the atmosphere. Are we okay with that? Your right hand is red, your left hand is green, and we're going to elevate you up toward 4,000 feet. That's that first horizontal line coming up. And you see that those lines tilt a little bit to the left. That means the temperature's cooling a little bit. 
Dew point's uh, decreasing a little bit, then it reaches about 4,000 feet, and wow, your right hand goes to the right, and bam, your left hand goes to the left. And that means on the left, the green, that's very dry air coming in, and on the right, that means that it is warmer. This is the cap. This is the lid everyone talks about. If you can break the cap, you can break the lid. Well, this is what we call a shotgun, a loaded, a loaded gun sounding, because all that energy, all that cape is below that little area that where the red went right and the green went left. So all that cape is below that. And once you can bust that cap, all that energy starts up and there's no way you can stop it. And if you have the proper wind directional shear, wind speed shear, and some other factors, you'll have tornadoes. This is the Moore, May 20, 2013 tornado EF5, and the, the trace looks about the same. In your right hand is the temperature, and your left hand is the dew point indicator. They go up, they go up, and then bam, temperature takes off the right. It's getting very warm up here to the left, and on the green, and it's getting drier. That's the cap, that's the lid. Once again, this is a, a loaded gun sounding. Once you break it, you can't stop it, and the storm will explode. So you have to have something to cause that air to go up, to break that cap, break through there, and that happens for a number of reasons. It could be low pressure area, it could be the dry line, it could be just temperatures, it could be convergence, it could be jet stream, lots of things can cause it. And this is the day of the monster tornado, Canadian County, Oklahoma, May 31st, 2013. Same thing, red hand's got the thermometer, left hand's got the green dew point reading, and they go up a little, a little higher, a little above 4,000 meters, and they squirt off right and left. That's your cap. They all three look alike. You take a picture of them, they look alike. You take a look at the surface conditions, they look alike. You look at the available potential energy, they look alike. Then you look at this sounding, they look alike.